Down drag out affair matching number 10 Temple and number 16 Indiana. As we welcome you to Bloomington, Dave Barnett, Quinn Buckner, two teams with promising uh, rosters built on defense as usual when you talk about Bob Knight and John Chaney. It may today come down to can anybody make the outside shots. And it's going to be harder for Temple for at least a month without their fine three-point specialist, Lynn Greer, who underwent surgery last night to repair a fractured orbital suffered in the Penn State game. It's on everybody else to try and do it from the perimeter today. It is, Dave, and what they're going to do is go with a three-guard lineup. They have Quincy uh, Wadley in the lineup. Pepe Sanchez has to handle the ball, but now you've got a little bit quicker lineup to try to penetrate, get some extra shots for the Temple Owls. And without Greer, who comes off the bench about as well as anybody he's had of late, he's had to do some shuffling in the starting lineup, and that means Wadley will replace Mark Karcher as a starter. Wadley not bad himself from beyond the arc at 41%. He's their second leading scorer on the year at 11 points per game. And Bob Knight makes an adjustment to his lineup as well with freshman Jared Odell, who was ticketed maybe for a redshirt year, earning his first collegiate start this afternoon. He has improved. Press Knight, not as a big scorer, which was his forte in high school, led Indiana in scoring two years ago as a high school junior, but with his ability to do the little things. And the opening tip control by the Owls. Number 10 coming in at 4-2. On back-to-back -back upset losses, though. 73-70 to Penn, the biggest surprise, and then 65-64 at Penn State. Both of these teams are very much into the defensive side of the basketball. That's where they're at their best. Indiana starts out in traditional man-to-man. -man. Which means William Gladness down low battling Lamont Barnes, who has to fall away for the game's first place. And, and that's a matchup that if they don't put pressure on the outside, that Barnes will win, because I don't think William Gladness is strong enough nor quick enough to keep Barnes alive from getting low post position. A.J. Guyton. Here's their, their matchup zone, and what the difference is, they keep a man on the ball. Luke Recker misses the three, and Sanchez pulling the rebound down. Quick chance for Temple to get the three-point try by Wadley. Barnes again inside. None of the big people are inside. So you see Barnes hustling down on the other end, the only guy in the, in the A-10 that went player of the week three times last year. 4-0 lead built by Lamont Barnes. Recker. Sanchez in the matchup zone, floating back outside. The pressure's on the shooter of Indiana. Both Luke Recker and A.J. Guyton have to make shots from the perimeter. Guyton having a strange year, scoreless against Syracuse. And capable any night of 20 to 25 as Odell missed the turnaround. Broken Burrow is fouled on the drive as again Temple saw a chance to run. And Broken Burrow foul by Jared Oak. They should run. They've got better athletes. And Bob Knight knows if it gets into a match where you get out and have to chase people that Indiana's chances are severely diminished because they just don't have the kind of players that can run with quickness. Wadley outside for Broken Burrow. Bob Knight coaching in his 999th career game today. Number 1,000 coming up Tuesday in Louisville against Kentucky. John Chaney, his 796th game. That's a lot of national anthems between those cities. Well, these are two of the winningest coaches in, in Division I basketball. Sanchez for the three, almost missed everything, and it's down to Indiana. Wrecker. Handles the bounce from Guyton inside. Look how they surround Gladys. But he barely keeps it alive with four black jerseys around him, and he's fouled on the reach by Sanchez. Well, so far, I think Indiana's passing has at best been suspect. John Chaney knows that they had a chance here, as you take a look at his record at Temple. The chance there, they, they had a chance to get a steal, and his guys wouldn't go down on the floor to get it. This is Dane Fife, prize recruit out of Clarkston, Michigan, and McDonald's All-America. Finally, A.J. Guyton gets the Hoosiers on the board. Hey, Dave, that was an aggressive move. And they, that's what he didn't do against Syracuse. He didn't put it down the floor quickly to get up off a dribble or two. He just kind of floated in the offense. You wouldn't 
think it possible for A.J. Guy to go scoreless for a half, much less an entire game. Yeah, because he's had 25 as a high, 23 as a high this year, and he's got that big donut to go along with it. So he's capable. He just didn't get any offense. Sanchez tries the other side, likes that better, and hits the three points. His first of the year, he was 0 for 13 beyond the three-point arc until he makes it 7 to 2. Temple has a lot of guys shooting in the 30 to 35 percent range. Guyton unable to respond, but there's Odell keeping it alive. But Guyton is, is definitely looking for his offense because that was an NBA three. Broken barrel, tight on record. Yeah, that, but the nature of their that matchup is they're always a man on the ball. Miss from the corner, Odell at Indiana struggling outside. When you beat Temple, generally you do what Penn State did. They won by one point win, and it took nine three-pointers for the middle line. Yeah, you've got to knock that, because the defense of Temple is very much dictated by keeping you shooting the ball on the perimeter. If you make shots, obviously, you defeat the perimeter. Wobbly got past Guyton, threw it away to fight. And a quick four-on-two chance for Indiana, ending in records three. Let me tell you. Wrecker has a chance to run to get into the break, and instead of running so he can get a layup, he get kind of jogged so he can get a three-point shot on that one. 19th of the year for Luke Wrecker. This year, almost as accurate from three as from two. And the Hoosiers are within two. A look inside for Kevin Lyde, the freshman. Somehow the Owls retain possession and a blocking foul on Dane Fight. Well, Indiana had some good defense that time, but just a matter of Temple staying after it, and they get a foul call on Dane Fife. Fifteen and a half to go in the first half, 7-5 out. Two-point advantage for number 10, Temple, at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana struggled with their shot. Did they, in the IU. You'll see at the top of the key, if we're right at the foul line, is Dane Fife, number four. Watch out, instead of running to get in the break, he looks to get to the three-point line. Dane Fife looking for him finding Luke Recker right there at the three-point line to knock down the three-pointer for the two-point deficit for the Hoosiers. Recker at 17 points per game, the leading Hoosier scoring coming in. Sanchez outside against Fife. Rashid Brokenborough. Recker denying Wadley. Just that he can't guard him. I'm surprised. Dane Fife really can't guard Broken Burrow. He can guard Sanchez, but not Broken Burrow. And Wrecker upset at that one. He thought he had a clean pick against Lamont Barnes. Third Indiana foul. Well, your watch coming on what will be the backside. You see Luke Wrecker coming. He thought he got his hand on the ball. He did first, but afterwards the official felt that there was too much contact. Phil Bova, Tom Clark, Owen Hanna are officials. Temple opened very impressively. Wins over Georgetown, Wake Forest, Mississippi. And the Heartstopper in the final half second over Michigan State a couple of weeks ago. There's the freshman line and guided in by Barnes. Didn't put a body on anybody. But you're right. The Temple started out great. And then they lost the next two to Penn and then Penn State. And as you said, Penn State shot the ball extremely well from the perimeter. Generally what it takes against the John Cheney team. Barnes, six of the nine for Temple. Gladness, that time surrounded by only three. Last time he touched it, it was four Owls. Five can't get the three from the corner. Gladness outfights Watley and sets up Guyton, who's way short. Great pressure that time by Pepe, Pepe Sanchez to get out to keep Guyton from shooting an uncontested shot. Oh, he checked it. Good call. Gladness with his first. You know, you've got to understand that they're rebounders, and a very good offensive rebounding team is Temple. That's how they stay in the game. Look at Lamont Barnes right there. Nobody touches him going in uncontested. He's able to tip that back in with his left hand. Indiana doing a poor job of blocking out Barnes being aggressive on the rebound. He'll get his share if you got two guys on him. If there is nobody on him, forget it. Yeah, because he, he thinks rebound, and you have to think that way to be a good rebounder. Barnes had to think in midair that time, get it out for Wadley's three-point try, rebound Gladness. Indiana started 6-0, and oh. that's the sixth time under Bob Knight. They've opened with six consecutive wins. Three of the previous five years, they won the Big Ten that season. Broken Burrow off glass, and here comes Guyton with a three-on-two. 
Almost lost it underneath. Travel. It's Gladness. Maybe he getting away with a one. No, he traveled. There's no doubt in my mind. He traveled on that one. Guyton got actually too far in, but Indiana got away with the travel on that. He'll take the two. His <laughs> first two. <laughs> the way these two teams play defensively, both of them keeping you shooting from over 40%. They'll take any basket they can get, Dave. Brooklyn Burrow just 24% on his threes coming in. And scoreless so far today. He's got to shoot it. Guyton keeps firing. Has hit only one. Yeah, you got to look for the shot because you're not going to get many uncontested, even three-pointers on, uh, on Temple. Barnes this time hit with the offensive foul. That's what Luke Wrecker will do. He's a pretty good all-around player. Luke Wrecker anticipating whether or not Lamont Barnes is going to get himself in position. And he gets down underneath. And watch. I did a little bit of an acting job, but he definitely got himself over there. And Lamont Barnes that takes away of a little bit of his aggressiveness now that Wrecker here has drawn that charge. First subs of the day, Rob Turner, Michael Lewis, Luke Jimenez, and Lynn Washington. All check in for Indiana. Mark Karcher making his first appearance for Temple. Mark Karcher doesn't start. And part of the reason they decided not to start, start Karcher is if you look inside with Barnes and Lyde, they've already got two post-up players. Karcher is very much a post-up player. as only one step down. Garrett Odell on the board. And it's tied at nine. And this is a big boost. Obviously, the fans are going to make a difference. First chance they really have to get into it, and Sanchez helping out with an air ball. But they're playing five on four. Washington got Quincy Wadley to land on it. They were playing five on four because after the ball got thrown in, it got thrown in to Rob Turner. Barnes never got back in the game. And for that reason, Wadley had to rush down and try to figure out how to keep the easy basket from happening. Wadley picks up his first. Lynn Washington at the line this year. Four out of ten. Indiana has been scratching their collective heads over their free throw shooting. Under 70% coming in. Yeah, that's uncharacteristic for Indiana teams. It's one of the things that for a long time they've prided themselves on is the ability to knock down foul shots when you don't have great offensive players. But what I was saying, this is that, that shot by Odo was big. You don't even have your starters on your floor. You're able to get a, a jump shot in a, a very tough defensive set. That's a, a good feeling for the guys on the bench. Losers operating, though, with the lead, and they look inside for contact. Indiana's fifth team foul with 11.55 in the first half. They lead by one. Quinn said Bob Knight teams pride themselves on the free throw shooting, but it has been a source of frustration this year. And in their last game, they just survived at Notre Dame in overtime. 12 missed free throws, including 10 misses in the final two and a half minutes of regulation and in the overtime. They just do get the 76 to 72 victory. A Bob Knight team shooting 69%. A Michael Lewis shooting 65%. That, for him, a drop from 83% last year. You figure Ready, man. at some point, form will kick in and they have to be better. Yeah, well, Michael Lewis has really struggled. He, I mean, he's turned the ball over unusually, uh, no, an unusual number of times as well. So, And that's a big part of why a lot of, their, of the overall free throw percentage is down. When your best foul shooters on the team down that, that many points. And A.J. Guyton, excellent. 87% best on the team, but can't get him to the line enough. Another concern. Barnes surrounded this time and almost turned it over. Lewis had a hand on it. It's Wadley leaning in, and he earns a trip. And the fans are booing because Wadley took his shoulder and just drove it inside and was able to get himself cleared to get the shot off. But the, the point that Bob Knight knows is once they knock that ball loose, that Indiana's responsibility is to come up with it because you're on defense until you have the ball. They had the numbers underneath. Had the numbers, knocked the ball loose, three guys didn't catch it. Quincy Wadley has his first point. One of the top six men, at least in recent John Cheney history, but pressed into the starting lineup in the absence of Lynn Greer. Watching at home is Buddy's 
with the Owls wishing him the best today. Lynn Washington counters on the other end. Yeah, speaking of Lynn Greer, his teammates wanted to wish him well. He had his surgery just today. And uh, they won't know, as you said, uh, for a month or two, uh, uh, how long. Well, they won't know until swelling goes down whether he'll be out and what, well, I mean, he'll be out how long anyway. Maybe for the year, but they're not going to make that judgment for a while yet. Hoping he can be back as soon as a month. Indiana doing a very good job when the ball goes inside, getting two people over there. In position. Archer travels. Got awfully crowded underneath for Mark Karcher, the former Maryland Player of the Year, and McDonald's All-America from Baltimore. Well, that's why they don't have him in the game with Lyde, Kevin Lyde and, uh, and, and Barnes, because all of them are low-post players. But Barnes uh, is, a, I mean, Karcher's a guy that can score the ball. He can make that. Ryan Turner can score the ball as well. Yeah, he can, he's a three-point shooter. Turner, when he, when he got here out of junior college, what he didn't do is he didn't pick up the defensive scheme very well, so he got lost in the shuffle of players, but he could definitely shoot the ball. A great start last year, faded at the finish. Faded. Disappeared. Faded to, yeah, thank you, <laughs> to non-existent. Effective all three games at Maui. And it's a three to give Indiana a four-point lead, their largest halfway through the first half. As a matter of fact, he faded like David Copperfield makes you fade. <laughs> <laughs> and Karcher with his first point. <laughs> Unlike a lot of proper field subjects, he returned. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Michael Lewis, who has had his struggles. Luke Jimenez. Back for Lewis. And look inside for Odell. Turner battled hard for the tip. Couldn't get it over the big Lamont Barnes. Credit to the defense that time. Indiana moved it, and the defense stayed right with it. Broken throw hard to the hole, and he gets his first point. Well, Steve Bokenberg is a guy that can get you some numbers in a hurry, too. But you got to make him make jump shots. Leading Temple score at 11.3, hitting only 32%. A miss by Jimenez. Jimenez did the proper field disappearance. Didn't play at all Tuesday at Notre Dame. Early action for him here. A wildly miss outside. But you know with Bob Knight teams that that's subject to happen with almost anybody. One day you're not there, the next day you can get it. You have a chance to be a star. Odell fired off quite a few here in the first half. But he's tired though. I mean, it, this is some extended minutes for him. Gerard Odell last year, fifth in Indiana high school scoring, led the state two years ago, better than 29 points per game, but not looked upon yet here as a score. Karcher, couple of spins, travels against the defense of Washington. Now that's pretty solid defense there. Karcher, if you have to dribble the ball that many times to get open, you probably should be looking to pass it. Lynn Washington is a guy, watch here, guarding Karcher, takes one, two, three, the help can come. He stays right there, pretty good position. Karcher goes in, I'm, I didn't see exactly the walk, but what, that was the call. Still 15-15, is Guyton Fife and Wrecker all return, and we see Kirk Haston for the first time today. 10-0 off the mistakes for Indiana. Fife almost caught in midair. Haston, a nice up fake. Many makeable misses for Indiana. Well, they, 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 they get shots. They, this is not a very good shooting team. That's why defense has to be their forte. That he'll do. Carter just doesn't play with as much confidence on that. I watched him work out, and, I mean, he knocked that down with regularity. Can go inside as well. He hits outside. He has five, and he breaks the tie. 18-15. Owls are going to get him for a reach. And the sweaters about to come off for Coach Cheney, 749 in the first half. And in Bloomington, 18-15 for number 10, Temple. I'll tell you what, 50 is looking like a pretty good score today. Yeah, I think the first one to 60 is definitely in the in hunt here. These, both of these teams average about 64 points a game, 65 points. And they're very good defensively. And right now, you're looking at, you know, 33 points between them. You're right, 50 is in the, in the cards. One thing that will come much more to play in the second half, 
is uh, how long the Temple guys can go. Most of them are used to 30, 35 minutes, but they're basically going with seven available bodies today. Yeah, and then you got to remember, they lost Lynn Greer, who really took up, he played 27 minutes a game himself. Right, and off the spin inside, Haston had it hammered away, right down to Washington, and back outside for a record three-pointer. And they get five for a foul on the rebound. His second and the seventh against Indiana. Yeah, he makes a bad play. That's a freshman mistake. He's got no chance to get the ball. But I think John Chaney's uh, disappointment in the previous call was part of the reason why that was called, because that play really had nothing to do with who got possession or anything uh, else. And if they got if Temple had lost the ball, I think that's one you make the call. But on that one, that's pretty much like an incidental contact. I'll look for that number on the left to go up in the foreseeable future for Karcher. Sat out last year, with his academics in order. So a sophomore, basically, in a freshman situation, his first season under Cheney this year, but a McDonald's All-America. Both teams started two of those today. Karcher and Lyde for Temple. Wrecker and Fife for the Hoosiers. They've held A.J. Guyton to just two so far. He can hit this shot off. Open three. Can't ask for a better look than that. Haston had it a little short on the tip. And now another backcourt foul, almost identical to the one picked up by five. And this time it's Lynn Washington second. Yeah, I think you got to be smart and know where you are in circumstances. Here's a circumstance. A.J. has a very good look, even though Karcher's coming out at him late. Misses that wide open shot. Those are the shots that you have to make against a Temple team because they're big enough. They'll come out with the rebound. That time Barnes did. And then foul was called. And Barnes on the front end. Just a 59% free throw. Barnes having to play out of position last year. At center, Mark Jackson surprised him by leaving for the pros early. Kevin Lyde steps in as a true center. Barnes still having to play some in the middle, but for the most part at his natural big forward position. He gets one out of two, and it's Temple back up by five. Yeah, but they can put a big body and Lyde on somebody defensively as opposed to having to put uh, Barnes on him. Washington and finally Haston off the miss by record. Now, Haston is a guy that started out early and had some good games as well. I mean, he had 17 and, and 16 against Indiana State, and Indiana State had Indiana down 19 points. Most recently, scoreless, one board, 11 minutes against Notre Dame. And part of that has to do that people know a little bit more of his capability, so they don't let him take uncontested shots. Brokenboro with a three, and he gets it. Eighth of the year for Rashid Brokenboro, the senior from Philadelphia. Came in as one of the top scorers in Pennsylvania out of high school. Main five. Still the same matchup zone, not putting as much pressure on the ball because Indiana hadn't really tried to penetrate anywhere. Or amazingly quick, a broken ball goes back and forth from middle of the lane to outside the three-point line to pick up Guyton as he just did. Record and it's up fake. Got Karcher off balance and scored inside of it. But it was a nice play to get the ball because that's where you have to go on the zone. You got to throw it over the top in order to get the defense clearly on one side, having to make the adjustment. And when they make the adjustment, it's hard to guard a guy if you're coming back at him and he's already started to move. That's short. Barnes unable to answer. Record starts his own fast break three on one if they hurry. Fight with the finish. That was the slowest fast break I've seen in a long, <laughs> long time. Heads into it as the Hoosiers close to within two. They have done it with balance today. Only Wrecker has more than one basket for Indiana. And he gets the cleanup opportunity off the miss layup by Fife, and we're tied at 23. I thought that was close to basket interference. I got to tell you that. Fife draws the offensive foul of Sanchez. You've got to stay aggressive to give your team a chance. You see right here, clearly, Lynn Washington gets his hand on the ball. And you can see it's kind of a whoever plods down there first 
That ball was close. It looked like it may have gotten off the rim, but Luke Record making a good effort to get himself back involved offensively. Seven Temple turnovers. Now, on average, they get about 10 more forced than they commit per game. They only commit nine and a half turnovers per game, an astoundingly low number. And they force 19 per game, but a total reversal today so far. Well, with teams that don't score where, that, that becomes the critical issue. Who handles the ball? That's why we were talking about Pepe Sanchez at the beginning, his ability to handle the ball. Gladness has returned outside for Haston. That's classic zone offense. If you get the ball on the post, you look opposite. And that's exactly what William Gladness did. And Indiana, as a result, quickly from five back to two, up under the four minute mark of the first half. Broken ball rejected by Kitan. A slow first half offensively for A.J., but he shows up on the defensive end, as does Brokenborough with the steal, and Wadley for the finish. Lewis gets the ball after the, after the steal on the other end, and he comes down, and the first, the guy he goes by is Brokenborough. He never tried to find out where he was again, and Brokenborough kept himself in the play. Just Indiana's second turnover. Hayston travels. Good idea. He was about to get Barnes up off his feet, but he turned it over with 324. Tied up late in the first. Five, Indiana 25 with 324 to go in the first half. Well, will UCLA play in the Fiesta Bowl? First, they have to get by Miami, and that matchup is next when Cade McNown leads the number three Bruins into the Orange Bowl. Ron Franklin and Mike Gottfried call the action immediately following our game. Hurricane game. And in the BCS rankings, UCLA still squarely between Tennessee and Kansas State. Tennessee in its conference title game today. Kansas State in its Big 12 title game as well. Florida State lurking at four. Waiting, waiting on anybody to have a misstep. But I think the way the system is set up, you've got to come out and be very decisive in your victory uh, as you play your last game. And hope that you played enough tough early opponents. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That that has been the question. You're talking about toughness. I think Temple is, is really abound with it. They lead with tough guard here. No turnovers in 32 minutes, 11 points to, to free throws to win the game. Pepe Sanchez with two. Normally, John Chaney does not put his guys back in with two fouls in the, in the first half. And that's the ball handle. Only played six so far here in the first half. Barnes goes to the hook, and it rattles out on but I tell you, he had good position. I mean, you get a chance to shoot a jump hook, you're pretty close to the hole. Quick hands, Wadley. Clean strip of Michael Lewis, pulls up for the three, and bricked it. <laughs> well, that's a nice way to put it. That thing barely touched the rim. But it clearly hit the backboard. There's a hairline <laughs> fracture on the backboard, I'm pretty sure. But he felt it, I guess. He felt something. Anyway, back in the 2-3 the, the zone in their zone, they've moved it more like a 2-3. At one point, it's 2-1-2, two, two, and the guy in the middle protects the inside. This is the shot you can get. Lewis off. Turner skip pass to set up the three. It's always a skip pass, and it's almost diagonal where you can be most effective because you're always taught on the weak side to collapse to the ball so the man on the far side is going to be somewhere near under the basket. Each team with three three-pointers. Indiana leading by three under the two-minute mark. Wadley tries the other side. A different kind of brick. And with a minute 47 remaining, coming up the courtyard by Marriott halftime report with Larry Beal. Dick Vitale's unsung heroes. And number 25, St. John's at Boston College. A look in, a preview of UCLA Miami coming up momentarily. As the Hoosiers look to add woo, the lead, and they could have doubled it on the three point drive by Guyton. Lewis chases it down, feeds Turner in traffic. Guyton looked at a two that time. Gladness back outside. Smart play, because they, they weren't going anywhere. Lewis tripped against the foot of Lyde. 
And here comes Temple near the one-minute mark. The Lewis has had his opportunity to make plays. He made a really bad decision there. Temple closes it off, so there's nowhere for him to go. And he's, he's, he's about a minute or, <laughs> from coming out of the game. Will be Rob Turner with his first. Broken Burrow on the line with 54.1. This is this is two teams. This is very much like when Utah played, I thought, Indiana, where there are two teams that just play aggressive and just a hard-fought game. It's not one where you're going to see a lot of scoring spurts because that's not the nature of either one of the teams. They just don't have enough offensive firepower to have it. What they will do is fight you every play, every was, position. I think it was after the Utah game, Bob Knight said, we may have set the best basketball back decades, but there was a lot of hard play out there. And I think we may not have it back decades, but we've got a couple years here because <laughs> this is a, a real rock'em, sock'em game here. Does it like to get broken through to the line more? He's 83 percent. He hits both those to get him within one 48 seconds. Well, on the perimeter, Indiana has three shooters. Luke Recker is a standstill shooter. AJ can get his shot. Haston is in a couple and another one. And then Haston knocks down his, but the other guy we're going to talk about was Turner. In some limited off the bench minutes in this first half, Haston's six have been key for the Hoosiers. This is one I think that favors Temple, because I'm not sure Rob Turner can really guard Quincy Wagner. Difference of about a second and a half on the two clocks. Shot clock down to 10 for Wagner. But this is where they may miss Pepe Sanchez, too. Oh, they got him locked up. Getting organized, down to three to shoot. Wadley hoisting up a player, and it's guided in. Will they give it to Kevin Lyon? That's, that's a good bet. That's a good hoop. That's not even close. Count it. And what was a desperation three-pointer turns into a perfect alley-oop for Kevin Lyde's only points of the game. While he's in trouble, you see Haston is the one that should be blocking out. You see Lyde just goes and gets it and puts it back into the basket to get this one-point deficit for Indiana, for uh, Temple. 30 to 29 here as we send it to Larry View. A lot more in order to get a win. I tell you the other thing to keep an eye on here, the starting five for Temple played Barnes is 20 minutes, Lied 16, Sanchez played 15 and had two fouls, or he would have stayed in the game. Broken Burrow goes 20 and Wadley goes 16. That's got to be a concern for Coach John Chaney having to play his guys that many minutes straight. As you look at the MCI 10-10, 3-2-1 stats, add them up, and the Temple starters, Quinn, played 87 minutes. The Indiana starters played 62. That means the bench is 25 minutes more rested as a group for Indiana. So the, the question becomes, does Indiana have the ability to make Temple have to play hard enough that they wear, that uh, Indiana wears Temple out? Powell's played only six in the first half. Karcher, 13 minutes off the bench. We'll see if as it wears on, it does become a factor. Haston earns a second half start. Six key points off the bench. Guyton continues to look in vain for his shot. He's one for seven. Yeah, and he's kind of a sensitive kid. You talk to the coaching staff, it's one of the issues that he's got to overcome. If you're a scorer or shooter, the one thing you can't be is sensitive, and particularly sensitive to the fact that you're missing it. A shooter shoots the ball. It's past Wadley. Good play. Off by line, and that opens up Gladness underneath. If, if you can penetrate a zone defense, you already pass two men, so you obviously have numbers in your advantage, and that's what A.J. Guyton was about to do that time. Maybe team led by more than six in the first half. 32-29, Indiana. Just about as close as you can get to a lock in this building against a non-conference opponent that goes back some 14 years. Gladness out challenging Barnes, and it's hit with his second. In fact, you go back to 84-85, Quinn, and in this building against non-conference opponents, 60 of the last 61. Got it. Indiana's just tough to beat here because the fans get involved in the game. They, they get a little bit of the energy going in the players, and it's just, I think the players are very comfortable playing here as well. Wadley has six. Al's back within one. Dane Fife. Toe on the line. That's a long two. Well, they, but, it, yeah, it's a toe on the line, but at least you got somebody else making sh jump shots. 
Indiana's having trouble finding anybody that looks decent on him. Michigan's Mr. Basketball a year ago. His brother Dugan played at the University of Michigan. As good as Father Dan. Record beats Barnes to the loose ball. Indiana has trailed at the half for their first eight games. Got a thin one-point margin this afternoon, but no huge deficit to climb out of, unlike so many of their first games. Sanchez takes this one away. And a three-on-two for Brokenboro. The pull-up is not close, but knocked back out for Wadley. Cut off by Haston. Sanchez down the lane. And finally over the game. Still firing away and still missing the three. I just, I mean, just a terrible play and a good play here by Barnes. This is a heck of a play by Barnes because truthfully, Price should have it. But AJ makes a bad play coming down on the offensive end. He's on a fast break with numbers and gets to the three-point line and can't decide whether to shoot it or pass it, and he takes a bad three-point. Night ready to go to Luke Jimenez. Maybe four guy. We'll see. Five. Looked as if he took his eye off the ball when he looked up and saw Barnes in front of him. No, he, he, he was going somewhere. He, he had nowhere to go. Open Burrow. And Guyton on the reach with his first. Indiana had some success. They're only up one point here, but they had success when they were able to move the ball around that tough zone that's played by Temple. What you have to do is be able to get the ball to go from side to side. Start it on one side of the court, get the defense to come to you, get it back to the other side, and then you have to make shots. And when Indiana, as well as Temple, when you play against teams that play with zone principles, that's what you have to be able to do. Because Indiana's defense, for all of its man-to-man -man principles, is very much a zone on the weak side. It is Jimenez in, as well as Rob Turner. Quincy Wadley. Perfectly placed lob inside for Lamont Barnes. That best two guys that just play with each other. Just, he threw that up there where only Barnes could get to it. No chance for gladness. Barnes, MVP of the Coaches versus Cancer Tournament. To begin the season, 11 points. So far, the only player for either team in double figures. Rob Turner way short right down to Gladness and right back up. And it's Haston rejected by line. Gladness had it stripped, and it's Pepe Sanchez bringing it away. Now, Pepe can get his hand on the ball. He, he can steal. He was second in the country in steals last year. Well on pace as a junior to shatter the career record at Temple by Mark Macon. Average is about a steal per game more than did Macon in his great career. Yeah, and, and Mark Macon had, had the career, if you will, for the John Chaney coach team. Maybe the quintessential John Chaney player. Sanchez Tough shot. off one foot. And they're going to get lied of in for a push-up. 15-39. Left in Bloomington in a tight one. Big people are, know who can get after you, make some blocks. Here, Haston takes the ball up. Kevin Lyde comes to get it, knocks that one out. Coming again, the quick hands of Pepe. Pepe Sanchez gets the steal and the block off of that play. As big a fan as there is in Bloomington, John Mellencamp, his wife, model Elaine Irwin, big donor to the athletic program, got him a nice indoor football facility. The lead donor for yeah. the John Mellencamp indoor practice building. Thus the John Mellencamp practice facility. Now he has been a supporter of Indiana uh, athletics for quite some time of the university. Guyton only one of eight and Indiana only down one. But the other problem they have on the bench, Dane, Dane Fife is on the sideline. It, they're putting a hot pack on his back. So now you've got another guy that can potentially get some things going for you that may be, you know, not as effective because of that as you see the quick hands of the Temple Isles to come up with that rebound. Sanchez quickly met by the trap. 
Sanchez early got his first three-point basket of the season and has not been heard from in the scoring column since. Karcher scoring over the much smaller Jimmy Day. Well, how about the pass by Sanchez? A behind the back bounce pass to his left hand with his, I mean, his left, but he was able to get it right where he needed to go. He is slick. He's a very clever player. Fouls by three. Sanchez out of Bahia Blanca, Argentina, where he is one of three Juans in his family. He's Juan Pepe, he's got Juan Carlos, and Juan Federico, his brothers. And it's Luke Jimenez answering with the three. She pointed out, never knows exactly how much or even if he will play. He didn't play in the last game. Key minutes this oh. afternoon. A miss by Sanchez. Pulled out by Rashid Brokenberg. I will say this about John Chen. He's been very patient as Karchi got in a hurry and threw that one out of bounds. Because Pepe Sanchez is able to do a lot of positive things for you here. Watch this pass. He sees exactly where Karcher is going. Jimenez gets out there too late. Karcher knocks it down. And then Sanchez came down. And he's twice taken two shots on one leg like a runner. Which when you play with a team that doesn't score many points, those shots you can't afford to take. Tied at 37. Haston Turner, quick ball movement, sets up a three by Luke Recker. And he wants more crowd involvement, and they respond. They're on their feet. 17,000 in Assembly Hall. Broken Burrow responds. And he's standing right out there waiting on that look. Nobody ever got out to him. Nice little play on this side. Pick and roll and had him step out. Broken Burrow given the offense that John Chaney needs out of him. Gladness. Fake Karcher off his feet. Indiana's made the last two perimeter shots, and that's how they're able to get the ball inside. Because what, what started to happen is the two wing players got more concerned about the guys on the perimeter. And then they, all of a sudden, they leave William Gladness wide open under the basket. Quick three-point look by Recker. Good Archer pass. looks up. Sanchez has everybody but Recker oh. beat. And a spin for the two and one for Quincy Wadley. Look for a long time there as if Rucker single-handedly would foil the fast break. Yeah, he did, but, but Pepe Sanchez made some pretty, pretty good play there. I mean, I thought the outlet pass was pretty outstanding. But if you're able to get it up ahead of the defense, Chan Sanchez gets it out, waits, just waits for somebody to come and help. It's Wiley with a little head and shoulder. Pump fake, knocks down the shot, finish the three-point play. We got Rucker for his second. Wadley has nine. He and the injured Lynn Greer account for about a third of the Temple scoring all the year, so a major hole being filled today. Based in a mid-air fake, and a rebound by Wadley. And here come the Owls up three. Fans still hot about not getting the whistle at midfoot. Well, these fans here are just a bit partisan. Who traveled? He took a hop when he caught the ball. Nine Temple turnovers, which is their average per game. They can live shooting 38% because they force about 10 more turnovers than they normally commit, and they get a lot more shots than they usually give up. Good sign. Jimenez stands still short on the three. Got Temple, and Temple, I think, has done a good job forcing Indiana to get the shot. They're finding him for open looks. Turnovers have evened out. He's wide open right there. Knock it down. Archer wide open. Not real close on the three. And it's down to Wrecker. And if they hurry, they're four on two for the Hoosiers. Sanchez points it again. Well, they got a four on two, so the two of the guys. Oh, oh he was in. Balls missed it. Oh, my goodness. A little must have come off the hot dog. And Turner draws the foul. You think John Chaney's going to remember those two points? Oh, not only that, it can be emotionally the turning point in the game. Right here, get a little, get a little hot dog going, and threw it too far, and misses it, and he knows right away he's in trouble. I mean, it's. This game isn't about style points. 
This is about points. And Lamarck Barnes cost his team some points for trying to get some style points. Very much out of character. Janey says one of the most intelligent big men he has had. And he doesn't pass out those type compliments to his big men every year. One of two for Rob Turner. Indiana is within two. Could have been better had Lamont Barnes gone styling for Temple. Well, remember the 12-minute mark where Lamont Barnes missed the one-on-none wide-open slam dunk opportunity to make it a four-point lead for Temple. Well, it's the, what they do is they miss the opportunity. They stop a fast break, and, and, and here is the senior coming over. Nate Blackwell is telling, he's making it very clear to Lamont Barnes, hey, we don't have time for that. We don't score a lot of points. So as a senior, this is my last shot. Now, when we got a chance to get some points, we got to come up with it. And that's the kind of leadership you want. I mean, they know it's, it's a desperation time for a senior. Well, you really notice the eight rebounds by Rasheed Broken Burrow. More than double his average. Sanchez using the Karcher screen. Gladness floating away. Karcher left alone. Nails the three-pointer, his second. And he has 11 points. Yeah, they've got to get out of Karcher. Gets, as much as he likes to play inside, I told you, he, he can make the shot. And he shoots it with a lot of confidence. The big people getting it done for John Chaney today. Karcher and Barnes each with 11. One more than Broken Burrow. Karcher gives them so, so much versatility because though he likes to play inside, you know, when they bring him in the lineup, they play him outside and he knocks down three pointers. Listen at 6'5, he is powerfully built though, 220 pounds on the roster. Rucker misses the three. Fouls quickly, and Brokenborough thought about a three with nobody underneath. Waited, and here's Karcher. Turns on Gladness, got a pretty good look, rattled out. So you can see he can get a shot because Gladness has three inches on him. He doesn't have any weight on him. And so he can still get there. Turner. And now Haston. Jimenez in traffic. Can he keep it live? Gladness does chase it down. There's some dangerous moments when Indiana goes inside back out to safety and <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> dangerous is not the word for it. I mean, you got to be, you, you'll have a heart attack. You know, if you watch this game and you have any sympathy for Indiana at all. A couple of key possessions, maybe right here for the Owls. Halfway gone in the second half, a five point lead to work with. And a broken burrow, three pointer is long. Wadley outfights Gladness. Now, how about that? You got a guard in there offensively outfighting the big people. Karcher, can he hit another three? Story of the second half right here, the sophomore out of Baltimore, Mark Karcher off the bench. The guy who had started for the most part, who comes off the bench now that Lynn Greer is hurt, having a big game from the outside. Biggest lead by either team now. The Owls up by eight. Haston, another wide open look at this one. He rattles in. He has eight off the bench. Because the good inside play that time by him, Jimenez just to get the ball where they needed to get. They need a timeout. The reason they need a timeout is Mark Karcher is tired and was asking out of the game. Remember, we talked about whether or not there are enough personnel for the Owls. Full timeout for John Chaney and Temple. Up six. Temple gets a much needed breather on the timeout with 9.19 to go. They lead by 6, 49 to 43. We look at our Duracell storyline. Owls have had big numbers from Rashid Brokenborough. 10 points and threatening a double double. Nine rebounds. 22 of their 49 have come in the paint. Indiana just 25% beyond the arc. Luke Recker is their only double figure scorer at this point. But I think the other thing you got to consider is that right now, Mark Karcher coming off the bench is giving them 14 points on five or seven shooting. That's pretty big for a team that scores just 64 points a game. His best so far, 16 with seven boards in the three-point loss to Penn two games ago. Oh, what a tough move. Well down for Rasheed Brokenborough. And the Owls back up by eight. Taking it over that time because he kept his body. He shielded the defender off, which is really hard to do from that position. This really has been a two-man takeover between Brokenborough and Karcher. 
Two of them alone pretty much handling Indiana. As the Owls right there, hot streak and another Indiana turnover picked up by Sanchez. That's 11 committed by the Yeah, Warriors. what Temple does is very good at is they will get to the basketball. Well, Barnes almost made up for the missed slam dunk. That almost uh, goes. Yeah, come on, Dave. That's he a wasn't going to make this normally, and he almost did. Yeah, okay. it's a stretch. Okay, I'll give you that. But clearly, Temple has been able to find a way to get Indiana to make some plays that they shouldn't make. One, you cannot take the ball into the teeth of a defense with a team like, like Temple that has such good hands. And Indiana's repeatedly done that. And Quincy Wiley, uh, Broken Burrow, and Pepe Sanchez, they're going to get their hands on the ball because they're that good. Dane Fife in to replace Luke Jimenez. That's because that last turnover in the traffic was Jimenez. There was nowhere to go with the ball. Twelve now for Barnes. Largest lead. Owls by nine, eight, twenty to go. As Indiana again faces a come from behind situation. They have done that more often than not in their first seven wins. It's enough to give you a, a heart attack, but they they are experienced at, at coming back. Kansas State had them down as well. 16 ended up being down 19 before the end of the third quarter, beginning of the third quarter. Boy, oh, nice move and a finish by Kirk Hastings. He's made three jump shots out there, Dave, so uh, Barnes went out to get him, and then he just put it on the floor. Hastings' big moment in a 19-point comeback against Indiana State. 18.16 boards in that one. He has 10 today. He wants to stroke it. Fouls around the perimeter. Archer a little bit short, and Haston pulls down the mid. That's a little bit of a heat check. A.J. Guyton still has only two points. Hard to figure his first nine games of his junior year. He's wide open. Pepe Sanchez makes a great play because he's wide open, and Dane Fife tries to reverse to get him the ball, and he's too late, but Sanchez just makes a great play. He'd have been able to knock that one down. Hoosiers have been here before, down 19 against Indiana State, a six-point win, 18 back against K-State, a one-point win, and with 17 minutes to go at Notre Dame, down 11, came back, took that one in OT. Five for the look at a three. Chased it down himself. And now it's Guyton. Back from five, another miss by A.J. Guyton, and it's Haston drawing the contact. Now, yeah, McCarthy's right. They've got to rebound the basketball. You let a team take two or three shots like that, John Chaney knows you can't let any good team do that in basketball, but because they don't come up with the rebound, they end up getting the foul situation. They have done a superb job keeping Indiana off the line. That's the third foul on Karcher. He's the first foul. He's the first uh, owl to have to worry about his foul trouble. Haston with one more coming. The fifth and sixth free throws tried all day by Indiana. That is unheard of. Well, I'll tell you part of the reason. Indiana, I don't think, can beat any one of the players on Temple off the dribble. So you don't get yourself in any foul situations where you all of a sudden you stop and go and they have to grab. I mean, I'm quite frankly, I'm surprised Indiana is 7-1. They don't necessarily have that kind of talent. But they had it last year. Bob Knight didn't think his team could have come back from the things they've come back this year. Probably a continuing issue as this season goes on. Are they athletic enough to match up with top-flight competition like they have invited into Assembly Hall today? Broken Burrow. On a move to the line, A.J. Guyton second. Well, that got come in handy. Antoine Randallel, who went through an entire football season. Now, go figure this. He, he may have taken more hits than any player in the Big Ten at quarterback for Indiana, running their option. First practice, once he switches over to basketball, he breaks a bone in his hand. And out three more weeks. I said, you know, because Randall L is from there. He went to the high school right there where I grew up about five miles. 
That's a senior kid. Come down here to be a player. You take him, a football player, one of the best in the universe, and you take him and get him hurt in basketball. You say, it's tough at IU basketball. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I guess. My things have changed. The Randall is a good player. He's a good basketball player, but he's a very talented football player. Following in year and Cam Cameron's two-sport tradition. Fight a big three-quarter, Indiana within three. That's why they like Dan Fife, because he's not really athletic, but he's got enough courage to take difficult shots and periodically make them. Nowhere to go. Six-minute mark. Broken Burrow oh, to take over down the stretch. That one knocked away by Carter. Losers can tie it with a three. That's been an iffy proposition for them today. Right around 25% all afternoon beyond the air. With very little from some of their big scores. Haston a miss and Karcher aboard. This will be a 22nd Temple timeout. And a reset shot clock with 5.27 to go. Temple right here. This is one of those things we talked about where you get a break for your team as well as a chance to reorganize. And so that's what John Chaney's doing. What he's going to try to make sure he does is to continue to force the ball to the outside. What Temple likes in, their two, in this 2-3 trap zone, or their matchup zone, is to force you to the sidelines, not to the middle. Bob Knight's Indiana Hoosiers have been able to get to the middle and then pitch it to the shooters on the outside. And that's what John Chaney wants to make sure it does not happen anymore. Owls still have played only six. Indiana played 10 in the first half alone. How much gas is left in Temple's tank in these last 5.15? Sanchez gets a look at a three and has his second not only today but of the season. What a big three, too, because they needed something coming out of a timeout. You always want to get a good look. So he gave his team a chance to maybe just breathe a little bit with five to go here. And not quite as trigger happy as in the first half, though. Barnes out to deny record. They're also getting out the guy to make sure that they make somebody else beat him. Tough shot. Record two over Barnes. Yeah, because he's coming out of a 16. Mark Barnes and Record takes one dribble and shoots a floater. That is a tough shot. And he's made some for Indiana in his young career. Just getting underway in his sophomore year. As 12, along with Kirk Haston, 56-52 Temple. I think Indiana's got their hands, they've, they've got their tags cut out for them here. Because in Temple, you have a team that normally can play slow down basketball, but they don't score. It's kind of what the way they play anyway. They're like a wishbone team in football. Get a lead exactly. and sit on it. And if they fall behind big, as Indiana has so often, real tough in their system to come from big deficits. They've never had a big deficit to worry about today. Broken Burrow challenges Tough. Haston and Wrecker and his foul. I think they give this one to Kirk Haston. His second, team's sixth. It's worth reminding you, going back some 14 years, Indiana against non-Big Ten opponents has lost once in the last 61 games in this building. Well, in Temple, they're playing, you know, a team that obviously is ranked ahead of Indiana. I'm not sure, frankly, Indiana is a top-20 team, but at any rate, they are there. But Temple is a team that can play when they're, they're healthy, can play with most anyone. Broken Burrow, five out of six today. 58-52, 3.54 to go in Bloomington. Quinn Buckner, Dave Barnett, Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, packed. And not 
too terribly pleased with the situation at the moment. Under the four-minute mark, their Hoosiers trailing by six to number 10 Temple. Short-handed but effective so far, leading 58 to 52. Indiana stacked with timeouts. Temple with the possession error, which means a whole lot less this year. Yeah, it does. If the defense ties up the ball, they get the opportunity to get the ball. So, yeah, it, in that sense, it does mean a lot less. Temple came coming out. They're playing a little bit more, almost, I mean, they match up with man to man. But I'm telling you, that's a tough shot because that's a game over Lamont Barnes to get him within three. Wrecker has 15, including three three-pointers. And he's coming off 27, so he's got to feel pretty good about his ability to get numbers against Notre Dame. Chaney has the freshman, Kevin Lyde back in. Matched up down low with Haston. Shot clock under eight for Brokenboro. Good job staying close. Haston popped out to help Wrecker and pull down the board. Yeah, he did. He did a good job of staying right there on Brokenborough. And Brokenborough tried to bump to get away. Boy, you really see the fruits of what Haston did in his redshirt year. He has developed. He's developed. Rob Knight said he may be the most improved player he's seen in this team here in a long time. He really came a long way. He got stronger. That's the shot. You got to take it. Way beyond the arc of A.J. Guyton has just his second basket of the day, but it ties it at 58. You could see the smile on his face, too. He knew he needed to make a shot. One out of nine from three. Two out of ten overall, but Guyton pulls the Hoosiers even. Faith got a five got a hand on that one. It's down to Barnes and he's fouled. Yeah, that's a good call in there. There's no doubt it was a free ball, but Barnes had it. Bob Knight is saying that it's a free ball, so anybody should be able to get it, which is probably true, but Lamont Barnes got there. But the reason everybody is so anxious now is Guyton, who has really struggled with his jump shot, is able to get a look, knock it down to get a tie. PA announcer tried to uh, rein the crowd back in. The foul was on Luke Recker, his third. Barnes breaks the tie, just a 59% free throw shooter. Well, it was three out of five and now four out of six today. Bob Knight went right down to the PA addresser to make sure that he made the announcement that that cheer needed to be stopped right away. Well, power to him. Temple by two. Two-minute mark. See, they're covering the lob pass now, the pass across the top. You can see the Temple's doing a much better job. If you don't penetrate the defense, nobody's going to come out there. Tough shot. Wrecker not quite enough on that one. But with help from Lynn Washington, wins that fight for the board. Washington ties it. You're right. That's Washington's play. Does he kept it alive? And got it back inside and makes the basket. Under a minute and a half. Sanchez almost an air ball. Now Wrecker in trouble and he gets a heavy timeout call. He was surrounded by Sanchez and Karcher and about to fall out of bounds when he calls the Indiana timeout. But the one thing that he did that I didn't think Indiana had done much of early is he was strong with the basketball. Because I think that when you play against a team like Temple, when they play defense, they, they reach for the ball all the time, and well, they should. Well, John Chaney in a rather animated discussion. Bill Bova. And Cheney apparently with uh, an adequate explanation. Uh, Knight getting one as well. The, the question, I think, is what was the score? Because at one time when I looked up on the clock, you couldn't see what, what should have been a score, and it, was, it, it showed up as nothing. Now the score is 60-60. So the question was whether it was 59. They had a problem. They couldn't get 60 up there. They had, first of all, five and then a blank digit, and exactly. then 59 for a long time, and it is finally correct. So they're really just trying to verify that the score on the scoreboard is what it, exactly what it should be. 
discussion eating up so far all of this timeout for Indiana with a minute 20 to go. A reminder that there is football following and big football in the Orange Bowl this afternoon as number three UCLA tries to finish off an unbeaten regular season and get to the Fiesta Bowl, but Miami standing in the way. That is coming up at 2 Eastern with Ron Franklin and Mike Gottfried immediately following the conclusion of our game, and UCLA still number two in the BCS rankings as Tennessee takes on Mississippi State tonight in Atlanta in the SEC championship game, and Kansas State this afternoon has Texas A&M in St. Louis in the Big 12 championship game, both on ABC. Well, we're at the 60 mark. We didn't know. We 60 may not be enough. Yeah, it won't we, be enough. We weren't sure if that was going to be. A, it won't be enough, that's for sure. But I, I wasn't sure we were going to even see either team at the 60 mark. Temple got going pretty well. Broken Burrow started making shots as well as Karcher. And they started to pull away. And then all of a sudden, still playing a little bit one on one, they missed shots. And Indiana came back on the other side and made some plays. Record makes a big three pointer after making a drive, shooting over Lamont Barnes. And then probably one of the bigger three pointers, I think, since A.J. Guyton's been at Indiana University was the one he made. Because he knows his team is depending on him. And he's got to make shots. And that's a big shot to make when you need to make a shot. And a few times as the second half has rolled on, he's looked a little hesitant, but never hesitated on that no he, he really didn't and, and because they started the ball on his side it went to the corner deep away from him so by the time it came back to him he knew this is one of the few shots we got to get that's what they practiced yesterday mostly a miserable afternoon for AJ who has not been to the line. That's a, a continuing issue with Knight. A.J. Guyton, the best free throw shooter, of no value to them in that department when he can't draw fouls, and he has not been able to do it so far. David, he doesn't drive to the basket. He's not going to get fouled. He's a jump shooter. All but one of his shots today, you're right, have been threes. So we hit a minute to go. Indiana down to 10 to shoot. Five finds Haston high post. Washington called for it underneath. Five to shoot for five. Got to shoot it. Now Washington. And he did not come close to drawing iron as the shot clock expires with 46.7 seconds. Great defense by the part of Temple Hobbs to force Indiana to have to take a shot, which is what you want to do. Make a team and take a shot under pressure. Indiana did not answer that test. That question was, can you get one? Oh, it's I thought Wally just about thrown that one right by Pepe Sanchez. Cheney will get a 20. I'll tell you what, for having played almost the entire game with the, the same five guys, he's used only six all afternoon. They're fairly fresh, you'd have to say. Yeah, and the reason is because nobody, Indiana never put any pressure on them. They never ran the ball on them, and neither did uh, Indiana force Temple to have to come chase them because Temple got the lead. This is now a full timeout. We're back for the finish in a moment. 60 to 60, 36.8 seconds to go, and Temple set to inbound. And the guy that they've been able to go and get points from has been Broken Ball. So watch to see if Rasheed Broken Ball gets the ball in kind of a pick and roll situation. They look inside for Barnes. Fans wanted a double dribble. He gets his tip in. 21 seconds. Barnes follows up his own miss, and it's Temple by two, and it's timeout, Indiana. Well, the question was whether or not he double dribbled. I thought he fumbled the ball, and that's what Bob Knight is saying. He thinks he double dribbled. I thought he fumbled the ball, and if he did, he's allowed to get the ball and dribble it. He gets the ball in the post. That's a fumble. And he's allowed to get it and go get it, go play. He didn't dribble the ball. He caught it, just mishandled it. You know, almost another question there if the tip was still on the front of the rim. Pretty close, I don't think it quite was. Two good non-calls as it turned out. Yeah, but Tipple, I, I agree with you. But Tipple's made plays. I mean, first of all, if he gets the ball that close to the paint, you've got to force him to throw it out. Indiana didn't do that. Then you allow the same guy to come get the, uh, the tip in. I, that's the problem. I mean, that's why Indiana's in the position they're in. You've got to block the guy out. Lamont Barnes, 16 points. Two more than Karcher to lead Temple. 
18.1 seconds to go. Number 10, Temple. Number 16, Indiana. Dave Barnett, Quinn Buckner, an Indiana team that has lost once at home against a non-Big Ten opponent since 1984-85. Up against it now. And down to 2.22nd timeouts. Temple has just the 120 and the possession arrow. Well, that's a sentiment a lot of folks agree with these days. It's been said. It has definitely been said. Who had Duke University up there, and, and, and Duke is, uh, after going up to the Great Alaska Shootout, they, they've started to play pretty well. Because they've got a pretty good team. What, what they, they have to get done is at their point guard position this Duke. Jimenez is inserted to help out with a last-second ball handling, and he's quickly fouled by Quincy Wadley. That is just the fifth team foul against Temple. And that's why they fouled. They got fouled again. They actually got one more. So they're going to foul early again. So you almost need to try to get the ball into somebody in the post position. So if they got to come out and foul. And Sanchez picks up team six right there. His third. Down to 11.1. I, uh, I personally would have would have waited. Because what I wanted to do is get them where they get ready to get a shot late. Shoot it. Guy Sanchez, two seconds, his leaner, no good, Indiana pulls it out. That way. <laughs> I mean, I am, I'm just amazed at, at how excited everybody is about this play. A.J. Guyton on a 3 for 11 afternoon provides the winner. He ball faked Mark Karcher away from him, and that's why Karcher doesn't get back to him. I don't know how you leave him. He's the best shooter. The guy on the other side is Luke Recker, and then Sanchez tries to come back and make a difficult play on the other side. Good ball handling. Gets a tough shot up. Not able to get it go down. Boy, I think Indiana's really lucky to come out with this victory. But A.J. Guyton made two huge threes, maybe as big a threes as he's made in his college career. So Temple's last four games now decided by one, three, one, and one. And Indiana goes to eight and one with a 63-62 heart stopper over the Owls. For Quinn Buck